Welcome to Contacts. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to record inventory in the general journal when you have value added tax. Okay, and we're going to do this using the perpetual inventory system. Now, we have done a very similar example before where we recorded inventory using the general journal, but we ignored VAT in that example. We ignored VAT. So, if you'd like to check that lesson out, which is simpler than this one here, which will help you understand this one much better you find the link to that lesson in the description below. Another lesson that we have done before is on how to do the general journal. So I hope you know how to do that. If you do not know how to do the general journal, we have a simplified example of how to do it and how to account for transactions in the general journal, as well as how to know what to debit and what to credit, okay? So those are tips we showed. You'll find the links to those lessons in the description below as well. If you have checked out those lessons or you already know these things, it will make this lesson very easy so what is vat what is vat first of all well vat is an indirect tax on the consumption of goods and services in the economy money is raised for government by requiring certain entities to register for and to charge vat on the taxable supplies of goods and services these entities become vendors that act as the agent for collecting vat on behalf of the government Okay, so VAT is what is charged over and above the selling price of a product and it makes money for the revenue authority and it's obviously for the government. So I'm sure we already know what VAT is and we always encounter it whenever we are buying product. Now VAT is divided into two. There is input VAT and output VAT. So when I say VAT, I'm talking about value added tax. So what is input VAT? Input VAT is VAT paid on the purchase of goods and services but will be claimed back from the revenue authority by VAT vendors. It is therefore an asset. So whenever a VAT vendor, and a VAT vendor is someone who is registered for VAT and who can claim, can collect VAT on behalf of the government and claim back from them, if a company buys products from somewhere else, let's say they go to their suppliers and buy products. Whenever they buy those products, the supplier has charged them for those goods, including VAT, so the goods that the company will pay for already includes VAT. So when the company gets those goods, and at the end of the period, when they have to account for the value added tax, they will see how much they've spent or how much they've paid someone else or how much they've paid their suppliers for VAT. And then they will claim whatever they've paid from the revenue authority. And then when you come to output VAT, output VAT is VAT collected on the sales of goods and services and will be paid over to the revenue authority. It is therefore a liability. So what is output VAT? When a customer comes to the VAT vendor and buys goods, the VAT vendor or you as the company will charge the customer including VAT. Okay, so the price that you will quote the customer includes VAT or the price that the customer will pay you includes VAT. That VAT that you are collecting, the portion of the VAT that you are collecting does not belong to you. It belongs to the revenue authority. So you'll still have to pay it over to them. That is why it's recognized as a liability because it doesn't belong to you. It's not your money. I hope that has made sense. It's important that you make the distinction. Just remember, how I used to remember it when I used to struggle is that input VAT is an asset, belongs to me, so it's coming in. That's why the word input. And then output VAT is a liability. I owe it to the revenue authority. It's going to go out, okay? So that's how I liked to remember it. And you can find your own way to remember them. But it's important for you to know that input VAT is an asset output that is a liability and when to account for them so let's go through an example which will help you understand this one much better here we are told that bucket b is a registered vet vendor the company uses the perpetual inventory system to record its inventory transactions vat is charged at 15 percent very important it's perpetual inventory system now we have done another one on periodic inventory system where we do the exact same journal entries you find the link to that lesson in the description below now we are told that the following transactions took place in may 2020 and we are given four transactions and the additional information here but what are we asked to do we are asked to record the above transactions in the general journal of bucket b for may 2020 so let's read the first transaction we are told that trading inventory was purchased for 65,000 rand cash excluding VAT. So the amount there of 65,000 excludes VAT. So we need to include it because when we buy goods for cash, 
we don't only pay the price excluding VAT, we pay the price including VAT. So we are asked to record the above transactions in the general journal. And we know what the general journal looks like. We did it before, like I alluded to in our other lesson. We also given additional information where we are told the company marks all trading stock at 35% on cost price, meaning that whenever the company sells, it marks up those products by 35% so it can make the profit. There was no inventory on hand at the beginning of the month and the transactions above are the only ones that took place in May 2020. So let's do the first one. Trading inventory was purchased for 65,000 Rand cash. Now we're just going to have the three columns. We have the details column where we put in the accounts involved. We have the debit column and the credit column. And we always obviously start with the debit column if you know your general journal. With the general journal, you usually have at least two accounts. So what is our first account? Our first account is inventory. And what are we doing? We are buying inventory. It's coming in. Inventory is an asset. It increases on the debit side. And like I said, check out the other lessons if you are confused about that. We gave you a tip on how to remember what is an asset and where you record it. What is a liability and where you record it. What is an income, expenses, and so forth. You'll find that one there. So inventory is an asset and we'll put it on the debit side. So I'm going to start with trading inventory. What is the amount of trading inventory? Well, the amount of trading inventory that we have purchased excludes VAT. Okay. The price or the cost of the inventory excludes VAT. Well, we already given the 65,000 Rand and it's excluding VAT. So the inventory is worth 65,000 Rand. Now, what do we put on the credit side? Well, before we go there, we have to now figure out is this input VAT or output VAT? Think about it. We bought inventory. That means we paid the supplier money. That means we paid them, including VAT. That means we can go to the revenue authority and claim back that money. That means it's input VAT. It's going to come to us. Input VAT is an asset. Assets increase on the debit side. So we're going to put the input VAT. Now, what is the calculation for the input VAT? Remember, if it's excluding VAT, then we know that it's 100%. Now, we did another lesson on simple tips on how to calculate percentages, which will be very helpful in calculating instances like this, where you have excluding VAT, including VAT, and so forth. So, this one here is excluding VAT. So, for us to get the VAT, we'll just take the 65,000 Rand times 15%, because we're told that VAT is charged at 15%. So, this is a simple one 65,000 Rand times 15%. The amount there is 9,750. Remember, it's on the debit side because it's an asset. And then we'll move on to the next one. How did we buy the trading inventory? We bought it using cash. So how much did we pay? We didn't just pay the 65,000 rand. We paid the 65,000 rand plus the VAT of 9,750. So bank money is leaving our bank. Bank is an asset. It decreases on the credit side. So we'll put bank there and we add the two together and we'll have an amount of 74,750 rand. Pretty simple enough. We are done with the first one. Let's move to the second one. We are told that trading inventory with a cost of 33,000 Rand was sold for cash. Now, whenever you sell inventory, very important to pay attention to this, especially when you are dealing with the perpetual inventory system. Whenever you sell inventory, you have two transactions happen. Let's do the first one. The first one is for the sales and how we sold it, how we sold it, whether cash or credit. So here we sold inventory with a cost of 33,000 Rand for cash we sold it for cash so that means bank is affected and bank is an asset it increases on the debit side and it's and it is increasing because we sold inventory for cash we received the money so we're going to have a debit on bank so i'm going to start with the bank there remember we're doing the second one and what is the amount how much did we receive well we know that this inventory had a cost of 33,000 rand but what else do we know we know that the company marks all trading stock at 35 percent on cost price so that means we added 35% to this 33,000, but we know we didn't just charge them that. We charged them including the VAT of 15%. So do you see what you need to take into account? So we're going to take the 33,000 Rand times 1.35. And 1.35, we are adding the markup. Remember, the company marks up the trading stock at 35%. So we're going to take 33,000 times 1.35. 1.35 is just the same as 135%. Remember, 100% is the inventory without any markups, without any VAT. And then when you add 35%, it becomes 135%. So 135% is the same as 1.35. And then we also have to multiply by the VAT. We have to take that into account. 
So it's times the 1.15. That is what you always do. What students usually make a mistake with is that they take the 33,000 rand, for instance, in this example, and they'll just multiply it by 1.15 or just add the VAT on top of it, which is wrong because they didn't just sell the inventory at the price or at the cost at which they bought. They had to have added the markup on top for them to get a profit. Another mistake that students usually make, they will have just added the 33,000 rand times the 135% meaning they've added the markup, but they forget to also add the VAT. So you always remember to add the two. And then what answer does it give us? It gives us 51,232 rand and 50 cents. Now we have done our debit. What else do we have? Is this input VAT or output VAT? So do you see after I've always done my first one, ask myself is it input VAT or output VAT? And you can always ask yourself this before you do your general journal. Well, we know that it's output VAT because we are selling to customers. Customers paid us money, which includes VAT, and that money doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the revenue authority, so we'll still have to pay it over to them. So it's a liability. An output VAT, meaning it will be recorded on the credit side because liabilities are recorded on the credit side. So we have output VAT, but remember what is, what is happening here? We are selling. We have sales. So let's do the sales. Remember, sales is an income, and income is recorded on the credit side. So we're going to put the sales and for the sales, very important to pay attention to this. We just take the 33,000 rand, the cost of the inventory times the 1.35 without the VAT. Now remember that students make the mistake of having their sales, including the VAT. That's not correct. Your sales must not include the VAT. So it's 33,000 rand times 1.35 and it will give you 44,550 rand without the VAT. Remember that. And then the last that will be is the output VAT that I just mentioned. So it's just going to be the output VAT, which is the amount for the sales, which is the 44,550 Rand times 15%. And it will give us our output VAT of 6,682 Rand and 50 cents. So do you see that we take the actual sales figure that we had calculated to get the output VAT? So we take the cost of the inventory, including the markup, and then we calculate the output VAT out of that. I hope it has made sense so far. Now we have just done the first journal for the selling of inventory. Remember, I told you when you're selling inventory, you have two transactions happening. The first one is the recording of the sales, which we have just done. But the second one also is the recording of the cost of sales, right? Removing the inventory from our books. Remember, we sold inventory worth 33,000 rand. So we need to remove it from our books using cost of sales. So what are we going to have is the debit. The debit that we're going to have is cost of sales and the amount is 33,000 rand. The amount there is the cost, meaning how much it costed you to buy that inventory. So we're easily told here that trading inventory with a cost of 33,000 rand. That means it costed you 33,000 rand. That will be your cost of sales and you put it on the debit side because cost of sales is an expense and expenses increase on the debit side. Our other account is inventory. Inventory and it's worth the same amount. Inventory is credited because inventory is an asset and decreases on the credit side. I hope it has made sense. We have just completed the second one. Now we can move to the third one. We are told that trading inventory was purchased for 46,000 Rand cash, including VAT. So it's a similar example to the first one, only that this time it's including VAT. So what is the first thing that we are recording? We are recording inventory because inventory is coming into our storehouse. So we're going to have a debit for inventory. And what is the amount for inventory there? Remember, the amount for inventory must not include VAT. This 46,000 Rand includes VAT. That means this, this 46,000 Rand is the 100% for inventory plus the 15% for VAT. So we need to remove that 15%. And how do we do that? We're going to take 46,000 Rand times 100%, which is what we want, divided by 115%, which is what this 46,000 Rand is. Now, if you'd like to understand how these formulas work, if it confuses you a bit, like I said, that example is very clear, explaining to you and breaking it down. And you'll be able to do any calculation example where you have percentages, where you are calculating VAT in a very simple way. Now we've just done the calculation for trading inventory. How much does it give us? It gives us 40,000 Rand as the cost of the trading inventory that we have just purchased. Now, what is the next thing? We have input VAT. Remember, whenever you buy inventory, you have input VAT included there. So we're just going to put input VAT under inventory and remember input vet is an asset so we debit it and then how much is it 
Well, we know that it's there. 46,000 rand times 15 divided by 115. Because this 46,000 rand is 115. And we want the 15%. Okay? And then that should give us our answer. Another way you could have done it, you could have just taken the 46,000 rand minus this 40,000 rand. And it should give you the same answer, which is 6,000 rand. And then what is the last thing that we do? Well, how did we buy this inventory? We bought it using cash. So we're going to credit our bank. If it was bought on credit, then you're going to credit your creditor's control or your trade payables. So that is the only difference with that one. So trading inventory, the cost of the inventory plus the input VAT. Remember, we pay them everything. So we're going to have bank of 46,000 rand. Okay, and we're given the 46,000 rand anyway. So it's the same as adding these two here. Now we have just completed the third one. Now we can move to the fourth one. What are we told? We are told that according to a physical stock taking, trading inventory on hand was 71,500 rand. Now, what is a physical stock taking? It's where they went to the storehouse and actually counted how much inventory they have in their storehouse or how much it's worth. And it's worth 71,500 rand. Why do we do that? We want to compare that with what we have in our books and see if what we have in our books corresponds to what we have in our storehouse. And remember, we are told here there was no inventory on hand at the beginning of the month. The transactions above are the only ones that took place in May 2020. So it makes it easy. So let's do calculations. According to our books, how much inventory do we have? That's according to our books. Remember, we have done a physical stock taking and it's worth 71,500. So let's compare it to what we have in our books. Remember, we bought trading inventory for 65,000 Rand. Remember, it has to exclude VAT when we are doing this. So we're going to take the 65,000 Rand. And then we sold inventory with a cost of 33,000 Rand. So we take 65,000 Rand minus 33,000 Rand. And then we also purchased more inventory worth 46,000 Rand. But remember, it's not just worth 46,000 Rand. We have to check out the VAT from this, which we did in our previous transaction. So we will have, we had a cost of trading inventory of 40,000 Rand. So we're going to take the 65,000 Rand minus the 33,000 Rand sales of inventory plus 40,000 Rand of the inventory purchase okay and remember all these must exclude VAT because the cost of the inventory always excludes VAT and it gave us an amount of 72,000 rand that means according to our books our inventories are worth 72,000 rand but when we went to count we saw that it's only worth 71,500 rand so what do we have we have what is called trading stock deficit what is actually in our storehouse is less than what we actually have in our books so that's a deficit so we need to reduce what we have in our books to correspond to what we actually have in our storehouse so we're going to have the 72,000 rand minus the 71,500 rand if what we had was more then we're going to have a trading stock surplus which is an income okay so here we have a trading stock deficit and we know a trading stock deficit is an expense so let's do our general entry we're going to have the 71,000 rand 500 minus the 72,000 rand like I mentioned and we have minus 500 rand which will be our trading stock deficit So in our general entry, this is how it's going to look We're going to have a debit for of trading stock deficit of 500 rand Remember trading stock deficit is an expense and expenses are recorded on the debit side and then what is that reducing? It's reducing our trading inventory So we're going to put our trading inventory on our credit side with the exact same amount of 500 rand now, trading inventory is another word used for merchandise or for goods or for trading stock, just in case you don't know or you're not aware of that. Now, we have just done all the transactions that we needed to do, and I hope this lesson has made sense. I hope you have gained value from it. And if you have, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time. Cheers.